Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Historia Politica Publica. In the episode of today, I will talk about Iris Marion Young, who is a political writer, which has a written an essay called Polity and Group Difference, a critique of the ideal of universal citizenship. It was published in 1999, and in his essay, uh, it is Marion Young argues that a, in spite of this idea of in modern society that there is equality among all the citizenship, this idea is used sometimes to disguise an unfairness and injustice lying behind the structure of the society. So for instance, he points that even though there is political equality among all the citizenship in the way that everybody has the right to vote, and each vote count the same as each other. At the same time, in the social and the economic sphere, there are inequalities, especially the white people, white male are the most privileged, and then you have the white woman, the black man, black woman, other minorities is stalking in America and the United States and points to the exploitation suffered by the Native Americans, the Hispanic community, the black people, and so on. So in that sense, see that's a kind of uh, genealogy, genealogy about how the modern state was created and see points to the French Revolution as the origin of the current national state and the ideas of freedom, liberty and equality. In that sense, for her, citizenship gives the same status to people in the political sphere, but again, not so in the economic realm because according to her, quote, Economic life is not sufficiently under the control of citizens to affect the unequal status and treatment of groups." End quote. In other words, because the economy is held by the capitalist has not even controlled by the states in many ways because the richest people can hide their fortunes in offshores, islands and other places to pay less uh, taxes, at the end this will be prejudicial for society and henceforth uh, people will be difficult to have a better life, better conditions. We can see how the inequality is rising in our societies and even though this essay was written like a 24 years ago, it is still very prevalent nowadays. See enumerate some of the problems regarding with this idea and exposes how the uh, universal citizenship, which is the, the, the theme that she's criticizing in all her essay, has this idea to create a general will that transcends the particular differences of group affiliation. This excludes groups judge not capable of adopting that general point of view. The general will, uh, it was the idea created by Jean-Jacques Rousseau, the philosopher of the Enlightenment, who at the mid of 18th century established this idea of creating a um, kind of common thought between all the people in society in order to make it easier to take decisions, to go forward with the different kind of ideas in society and also to implement everybody's needs because if all the people had the same necessities there will not be a need to discussion which obviously this um, is kind of utopian and also it has uh, developed in some of the worst totalitarian regimes in the world. The general will was uh, implemented at the end of the French Revolution in the last years, also in uh, totalitarian countries, especially like uh, Soviet Union, China and others, like uh, the general will as a kind of trying to uh, curtail the liberty of the people in order to make an homogeneous mass which for it is Marion Young that it is not uh, attainable. In that sense he puts the examples of that if there is uh, a need to create a general will people like Muslims, immigrants and many others will be excluded. But the interesting thing that uh, it is Marion Young found uh, it, it is that in the 20th century second half of the 20th century after the wars and in the 21st century, this kind of a exclusion, it is not made explicitly by the people who control the power but or that generate discourses in media and other kind of platforms. But even more pointedly, it is the fact that the people who are excluded are so because they are not able to adapt to the society according to the people who uh, kind of 
um, left these people behind. So for instance, because there is this idea to create a general will even in our current times, like universal citizenship, in which there are norms that are not to be dis discussed, people who came from other countries and they have different cultures are not accepted. And we can see uh, the, the best examples that I can come across are those of the far-right parties in Europe who are opposing migration because they think that they must share their cultures. And we have Vox in Spain, uh, the party of Marie Le Pen in France, we had Nigel Farage before in UKIP in UK, we have Matteo Salvini, Giorgia Meloni in Italy, we have Victor Orban in Hungary, and there are other examples across the world, we have Bolsonaro or Donald Trump, which they, what they are saying is that it is not that they don't like migrants, it is that they don't like the migrants that are not homogeneous as the ones that are living in their country. So th because these people, they control the narrative, they have uh, media who support their approaches. This idea can permeate easily in society and stigmatizing the migrants has been a tool used like in the 20th century, 20th, 21st century is very common to blame on the outsider who cannot defend themselves. And in that sense, it is my own point that it is necess necessary to create a new kind of society in order that these people can be integrated with their difference. This is the important thing here, that it is impossible to create an homogeneous group in which everybody shares the same values. Nonetheless, it doesn't matter that people have different cultures, follow different religions, they have uh, a diversity of cultures. In fact, this is even good for society because it will let people to learn from each other and when we take political decisions, engaging in, in the public sphere, as Habermas will, will say, we can listen to other point of view, not just our, let's say, more common surroundings, which perhaps has similar uh, ideas, but rather to kind of um, establish an, a kind of heterogeneous diverse uh, kind of uh, sphere to engage with other communities and in that sense this will be at the end beneficent for societies because we could we will see uh, different problems from different kind of, of points of view in that sense a the problem is that because there are privileged group of some about the others it is marion young uh, advocates for the need to articulate some special right that attend to group difference in order to undermine oppression and disadvantage that are faces, faced by this group. In that sense, uh, she criticized this idea of citizenship as generality and for her, she advocates differentiated citizenship as group representation. So she points uh, on the one hand, citizenship as generality and on the other hand, citizenship as group representation. What does she mean by citizenship as generality? Well, for her is the idea that I was talking before of creating a kind of general will and um, homogeneous group in which there are some uh, norms that are already established and cannot be changed. In that sense, in order to do so for Young, the idea is that we must be depoliticized and need to retreat from the private realm to participate in society. In that sense, we will create a society in which in theory there are not a diverse of demands and this will be easier for the powerful to keep uh, with the current culture of class difference to give more privilege to a group than the other and this obviously goes from the liberal individualism by Thomas Hobbes and John Locke but also she points to the civic republicanism of Rousseau and Machiavelli. They have different friends, but the idea of all of them was most of it, this kind of creating a society which will be easier to, to manage uh, for the people in power. So he, she wants to uh, establish another kind of attitude towards the different communities in order to give uh, equal rights, not just in the public sphere, but also in the economic and the social realm. Because Burwa's uh, world creates a moral division of labor between reason and sentiment, that is one of the problems of, of what was happening in the past and ideas that has been uh, current until nowadays. This is very important because even Gousseau, which was the like of little, um, intellectual father of the French Revolution, was kind of radical for the, this time, her, his time, like 300 years ago. Nonetheless, 
she uses rationalization against women. Like, in order to establish a hierarchy of the masculine uh, kind of people against the, uh, the females, the idea was that, according to Rousseau, that the male had to stay in the public uh, realm. They were more rational to discuss politics, where the women had to be more in the private realm because they were more passionate, they were not able to think as much, uh, as deep as the men. So it was better that they stayed with the family. I really like this essay because she points to a reality that sometimes people do, do not realize because we have not been taught like that in the schools. The thing is like every movement in the past which has attained power or some kind of cultural hegemony among the society has always been rationalized. So the thing is like when we are being, when we learn that Nazi Germany was evil, they were crazy, there was nothing there to take in advantage, there is only part of truth of that. Yes, indeed, they were crazy, they were murderers and they were doing horrible things. But at the same time, all of this was part of a rational plan that they were carrying on. The idea that there was a superior race which was had to dominate the world because they wanted to save their the world or at least their world in the German world. And in order to do so, it was important that the most able people according to their rationality had to take control of everything. And which any movement that has happened in the world, whether liberalism, capitalism, communism, a fascism and so on, there is always this rationality and it is important to think that and the patriarchal family, it was also based in that reason. So if nowadays we think that, oh, these people in the past, they were crazy, they were uh, chauvinist people uh, subjected under a kind of realm of machismo, a current that nowadays has disappeared, we are completely wrong. And in fact, this is counterproducent to the feminist movement because uh, there has, there has always been rationality, and even nowadays, to avoid equality between men and women, real equality, the people who oppose to feminist movement, they try to rationalize their ideas. And this is the, the most important to, to explore, because ideas are very powerful, ideas can a, uh, extend across the masses, ideas have deep down philosophical insights, which right, right or wrong, they can be used for achieve uh, high ends. Um, Hannah Arendt point that uh, kind of using rationality and morality to change society is dangerous because, and she points one good example, like there are people who believe that uh, homosexual people will not be uh, granted equal rights and they base this idea upon their own morality, like, okay, my morality, my rationality says that they are not the same as us. So rationality, morality, uh, it is important to understand because even though many times sounds crazy and it is uh, really hard to believe, uh, but still it is normally created under a process of thinking. So. Within this paradigm, the exclusion of group like America uh, during the American Revolution, the English Revolution, the Revolution in Europe, were kind of a, established in this idea of hierarchy, hierarchies, uh, because fearing group difference could undermine the project. For example, during the American Revolution, the red and black people, so the, the, the people in America, like the Native, Native American, they were considered as wild. And this was precisely said by Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson, one of the founding fathers of the United States, which believed that these people could not be included within the uh, idea of American people because they were n n native lovers and they were irrational. They were not able to think as much as the other and so on. And obviously this is something that was used during the colonized period to kind of uh, undermine the ideas of the black communities, the Asian communities, in order to give legitimacy to the European um, conquerors. Because yes, giving legitimacy to one or to own, an own rationality is fundamental for the realization of this movement. So in many times, uh, legitimization goes with rationalization, later on will normalize a kind of attitude in society. So 
in that sense, a, there are uh, political theories which believe that it's important to separate the public sphere from the private sphere. But people like Nancy Fraser or Young believe that, on the contrary, if we separate those realms, the problem is that in the private realm, the, the, this will be a place of oppression for women, taking care of the family, forced to be submitted to the husband. Whereas if we include, uh, if we join the public and the private sphere, all these uh, unfair situations that happen in the private, private sphere will can be extrapolated to the public sphere to be kind of shared in public and debate among different communities. A good example is the gender violence, how in the past the male had more legitimacy to hit their woman, to kill them. Nowadays, this is changing. And even though there are still many murders uh, of women by hands of men in society, at least there is a social consciousness which has been uh, uh, increasing in the last years and we and most important or equally important women had some uh, tools at her at their disposal to defend themselves like being able to a uh, call the phone in order to receive assistance or being held by other people and some people in society nowadays do not see women as the private property of men um, and in that sense uh, so that is being changed because the private and the public are being merged together. In that sense, uh, Young mentioned that this idea of creating a universal citizenship is a lie. It doesn't exist. It cannot work. Uh, and she says literally, quote, the impartial general is a myth as people necessarily are properly considered public issues in terms influenced by their situa situated experience and perception of social relations. End quote. Like their history, their culture, their experience, their needs, how, how all this has helped to develop their ideas of the world, and this has shaped their reality. There is the interest group pluralism, deciding private by a bunch of people and involves all with their decision. And as Young says, quote, having the voice of particular group perspective, other than one's own explicitly represent in public discussion, best foster the maintenance of such critical distance without the pretense of Impartial, impartiality. And also she points how instead of a universal citizenship in the sense of this generality, we need a group differentiated citizenship and a heterogeneous group. For that reason, she explains that instead citizenship as generality, she advocates for citizenship as group representation. In that sense, she shares some ideas of Amy Goodman, which is another political theorist who point that participatory democracy structures tend to silence disadvantaged group. In other words, segregation as the whites were able to articulate their demands to promote their interests. And to avoid this, Goodman points that social and economic equality must be achieved before political equality. In that sense, uh, what is a social group? Well, for Jones, a social group uh, is kind of uh, people who are forming an identity for affinity or due to the stereotypes imposed from outside. So a good example that she points is like homosexuality uh, has existed for thousands of years. Uh, even in the ancient Greece, there there was homosexual there were homosexual practice practice in 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 that society. And yet there was no there was not kind of gay, gay identity like nowadays LGBTQ plus community. So even though there were um, identities in a sense that some people uh, kind of, there were some practice, sorry, there was not an identity. And nowadays this has changed. There was always women in the past who fight for their rights, but the feminist movement is a kind of, a kind of recent a trend, a recent idea of identity that has saved the uh, aims of many people. Also, uh, she points how a, the, the key aspect to eliminate is the oppression. Oppression for uh, young includes different things like exploitation. Uh, this is a kind of explicit oppression like killing people, torturing and so on. Marginalization, like this is a more kind of segregation, like the, a kind of group live in an area which is less polluted, has more natural light, better roads, more hospital, better schools, and so on, whereas other live in other areas. This was very clear in the colonies, in, in French Algeria and France Fanon has 
written uh, widely about that, how the colonial world is a world divided into compartments in which there is one compartment, the rich one, which is shiny, and the other which is dark, is like uh, dusty and so on. Also, the powerlessness is important. People who, even though would like to uh, reclaim more rights, are unable to do so because they do not have the means or their platform in the sphere in order to uh, raise their voices. The cultural imperialism, this is very interesting in our societies, how, for instance, even if you want to kind of practice another religion, uh, which is not the one that has been hegemonized in your country, uh, even though perhaps you have the right to pray to your god or do another kind of rituals because this will not be seen as kind of normal in the society you probably will be forced to do that in your private realm rather than outside and this is cultural imperialism how a common idea has been normalized among society in order to avoid that other people uh, kind of uh, share different ideas which go in common with the trend of the society and random violence obviously who is like when people go in the street like kind of uh, fascist or nazi groups and just start to hit people who they consider inferior uh, so in the realm of oppression for young you have exploitation marginalization powerlessness cultural imperialism and random violence and in that sense, a C point that one of the solutions is that, quote, we must develop participatory democratic theory on the assumption that are group differences and that some groups are actually or potentially oppressed or disadvantaged. This is fundamental for the ideas. And one of the things that she wants to explore is what is justice. And in that sense, a is important the socialization between different groups because she points how as a person of social privilege people are not likely to outside of themselves and have a regard for social justice unless they are forced to listen to the, be the voice of those uh, their privilege tends to silence so if the rich people are living just in their sphere probably they won't understand what is being to live under uh, harsh conditions and it will be difficult for them to show more empathy towards different communities in that sense, citizenship as generality, which is a the criticism that Young points, uh, it avoids and obscures this requirement that all experience, needs, and perspective for social events have a voice and are respected. So again, she points to uh, citizenship as group representation. She emphasizes the idea of the Rainbow Coalition, which was created by Fred Hampton the leader of the Black Panthers uh, in Chicago, Illinois, who in the 1960s um, created a group in which in this included black women, black men, and also white men, which were poor. And the thing what he wanted to say was like, okay, um, even though in the past the black, the white people has oppressed the black, the black, I think that the problem is capitalism. So we need to join all together in this rainbow coalition, black, white, and also other communities in order to establish a different system. Fred Hampton famously said that, uh, quote, I don't want to change uh, white capitalism for black capitalism. I want to change white capitalism for socialism. And I think this phrase epitomizes his thinking um, and how he wanted to include a, a considerable amount of people in order to push for different uh, approaches to take in the society. In that sense, uh, the group representation employs uh, the idea of creative thinking and flexibility. This is very similar to anarchism, the idea that you cannot follow a prescript dogma, but rather it is through the process of engaging or socializing with different people to thinking critically that you can start to develop uh, your ideas and also through the practice of those ideas. Maybe all the people agree to carry some program, but after a while they realize that it doesn't work, so they will be able to change and shift this approach. In that sense, a, it is important to understand that in every society, as Emma Goldman said, like uh, and in different contexts, people can follow different means. So it is Marion Young is speaking about America, a society in which in theory there is uh, there is freedom, political freedom, but there is no economic and social freedom and, so, uh, and equality. In that sense, it is important to adapt to that context.
So, and the last thing that I wanted to say about Young, I mean, the essay is um, really interesting to to um, and uh, to analyze. Also, there are many insights important to take into account, but just to kind of do a last sum up, um, see points how the universal rights and special rights is uh, has to go to a social consensus in which every person will deserve a moral worth but without inequality and for her the problem nowadays is that people consider that everybody deserves moral worth or at least that is the common the general will let's say but inequalities persist in that sense and she puts some examples how the uh, there should be kind of a special a special uh, particular rights, particular needs for different groups, like for people with learning disabilities, also with women when they are pregnant, how people advocating for equality believe that even though women are pregnant should work same as men and so on. But for her, this is wrong because it's again the idea of trying to homogenize uh, the different demands and the importance for young is to understand that the different communities, they have different needs, are also different cultures, histories, and it's important to uh, speak about all together, not enmesh all in one just uh, common homogeneous uh, whole, but rather establish kind of a uh, different ideas which will be uh, willing to debate in the in the public sphere and in that sense this will enrich the society. So in, in the last line of the uh, essay she says, quote, I do not believe that challenging the idea of a unified public or the claim that rules should always be formally universal subverts the possibility of making rational normative claims. In other words, see points like, even though I am trying to create a different idea rather than the homogeneous sphere that has been consolidated in the Western world in which all of us we need to pursue the same kind of ideas, a this one. Uh,